once again for Gaming with Max Von Puppet. That's me. Yes, I'm still here. I'm still around. Um, I realize I haven't made a video in a long time, and I'm sorry for that. But, uh, you know, uh, it uh, just wasn't done. I don't really have a good excuse for you. I, I'm sorry. I, I'll do better next time with, with the excuses thing. But, uh, so, uh, in case you're wondering what I have been doing, what I've been doing is I've mostly been playing a lot of Dungeons & Dragons, probably guessed by the box set right next to me. We'll get to that in just a second. Uh, but, yeah, I've been playing a lot of Dungeons & Dragons with, uh, with some friends of mine. I got a good campaign going, uh, which is uh, going to lead into the next video I'm going to do after this one, where I'm going to talk about the Dungeons & Dragons Player's Handbook. Um, today, we're going to talk about the Dungeons & Dragons Starter Set. Um, and again, I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. Uh, other things I've been doing in the last couple of months is uh, I've been playing a lot of uh, interesting video games. Um, some good stuff out there. I, I got recently back into Don't Starve. Um, which is a, a, a by Clay Entertainment. If you've never seen it, it's a great little indie game. Um, it's a wilderness survival game, and I recently I got back into it because there was a, an expansion that was released a couple of months ago, and I finally had the time to get around to get to it. Um, I've also been playing things like uh, Costume Quest and, um, you know, just a, a bunch of really cool other indie games. None of them necessarily new, but uh, new to me, and I've been having fun with that. But uh, unfortunately, my... My uh, microphone that I use when I record Let's Plays uh, uh, isn't around anymore. It, I was borrowing it from a friend of mine, and he needed it back, and uh, so now I don't have it. So that's the story behind that. Uh, I'm looking into getting another one. Um, I'd like to, you know, not just get a cheap one, um, just to have one. But, uh, you know, if I need to, I'll do that. But in the meantime, I think I'm going to try and find a way to, like, maybe just do voiceovers, um, you know, recording straight from the, the computer, uh, and do some voiceovers onto uh, like actual footage of me playing the game. Uh, we'll see. We'll see how that works. But in the meantime, let's get into today's topic: the Dungeons and Dragons Fifth Edition Starter Set. This is a fantastic box. First off, let's take a look at that artwork. Isn't it beautiful? I love that dragon. I love the fighter down in the front trying to take it on. Uh, it, it's heroic. It's awesome. It covers everything that Dungeons & Dragons is about. Heroic combat against fantastic monsters. It's great. It's just, uh, it, it's, it's, I uh, dare I say it, it's iconic. Yes, it's iconic. I think you know, 20 years down the line from now, people who are just getting into Dungeons & Dragons are going to look back on this starter set and go, yes, that's the one that I played. That's the box set that I played when I first learned. And and I think that's always awesome when you get something like that. And, uh, you know, I really think that uh, Wizards and Hasbro did a good job with this one. They, they got it. They nailed it. So let's get into what's in the box and what the, the starter set is like. And we'll talk a little bit about what it's not as opposed to what's inside the player's handbook because you know it is just a starter set so it's not going to have all the rules that you see in things like the player's handbook the player's handbook of course is going to have everything you need to have to play and then uh, if you want to get into being a dungeon master you're going to want the other two books the monster manual and the dungeon master's guide these are classic books that are always available in every edition of Dungeons & Dragons. They still keep the three-book format, which personally I'm fond of, but we'll talk more about that in my next video when I go over the Player's Handbook. So, let's get into the box and see what's inside of it, shall we? Okay, so here we are with the box right here. Um, uh, it's not really an unboxing per se, because I've already opened up this box and looked through it numerous times and used a bunch of the stuff that's inside of it. So, uh, But I do like the experience of actually opening up the box. And also I wanted to give you a chance to get a better look at that artwork, because I do think it's really fantastic. All right, but let's just get right into it. Let's open it up. Here we go. So here's what's inside. Uh, it's exactly the same artwork. No, this... Uh, Inside we've got, let's start with uh, what's in here first. Let's start with the dice. So you've got a complete set of dice that comes in the game. Um, it's, uh, it's, you get one of each type. So a four-sided, a six-sided, an eight-sided, uh, a ten-sided, a twelve-sided, and a twenty-sided. So everything you need to play is right there. Uh, I do wish it had included a second ten-sided, a, per, uh, a, um, a percentile die. Um, you know, with uh, this one, you can see here, this one has numbers on it marked... Uh, you know, uh, 1 through 10, uh, or 1 through 0, 0 through 9, I don't know how you want to number that, but it's, it's usually 1 through 10. And uh, it's just single-digit numbers. They do make these that have 10s um, on them, so it'll be like, that would be an 11, that would be a 17, or, or a 70, I guess it would be, that would be a 10, that would be a 70, that would be a 30. So that way it's your 10 spot. 
So there's a zero after each number, including the zero which had two zeros on it. And then it makes a percentile dice, which is something you actually do use in the game um, to get numbers between uh, one and a hundred. And um, it's useful, and I do wish they had included one of those in there, but you still get a full set of dice anyway. It's enough to play the game. Uh, percentile dice aren't hugely important in the game, and it's not like you couldn't just borrow somebody else's d10 and make a percentile dice out of that. Um, so uh, there's the site, the, the dice. Uh, the dice are, by the way, really nice looking. I don't know how well you can see it in this camera view here, but um, they're this nice blue marble uh, color, and I really like them. They, they, they went right into my dice set. Um, as opposed to into my extra dice, which I let anybody use. Um, these went right into my dice set because they are really nice looking and I like them a lot. All right, now let's look here. I'm going to move the box out of the way for a second. This is the starter set rule book. Um, you can see it's not really all that thick. Uh, it's just a paper rule book. Um, it, again, it doesn't include all the stuff that's included in stuff like the, uh, the player's handbook, but it does have, there's the player, there's the uh, table of contents. It does have a lot of good rules in it. Um, it also has some really awesome artwork, uh, some of which is shared with the player's handbook, of course. Uh, all of it, I'm assuming, is actually shared with the player's handbook. But it's a, it's a pretty good, it's exactly what it is. It's a starter set, and so the rules in it are pretty basic. It's just a, it's a pretty basic um, rundown of the rule that covers everything you need to have to be able to play the adventure that comes in the starter set. Um, so there's rules on, uh, you know, how to play, what is role-playing, um, uh, that usual stuff, um, what you need to have to play with this particular box set, which, by the way, comes with pretty much everything you need, except for maybe some pencils uh, and some friends that sit around the table and play with you. Uh, there's a nice little picture of the dice right there. Um, and then, you know, it goes over the attributes that'll be um, uh, the six attributes that exist for all your characters. And there are pre-made characters that come in the game. Um, it covers uh, some basic combat rules. It co also covers, like, the stuff that's on your character sheet, like, uh, beyond your stats. It also covers things like uh, special vision types, um, what your... Uh, it doesn't really go over, like, races or classes or anything like that. Um, the character sheets kind of cover that a little bit. Um, it doesn't really get into things like uh, backgrounds or, or bonds or anything like that. That's all covered in the player's handbook, and we'll go over that in more detail when I do cover the player's handbook. But like I said, this is a starter set, so it's just pretty basic, um, and it covers uh, just the basics. It covers just what you need to be able to play. It does have a good chapter on combat, though. It covers a lot of good stuff on that. Um, I haven't really read this book in a lot of detail. I kind of skimmed through it when I first had it because, um, honestly, by the time I bought this, I, uh, the player's handbook was already out, and I was getting one pretty shortly. So um, I, I, didn't, I didn't read this as much as I probably should have. I just kind of skimmed through it once um, because my game didn't actually play with these rules. We weren't using the, the base of some more artwork down there. The artwork for this game, i got to say, is really nice. I really like the artwork for it. I like that it's... Um, it's a uh, it's varied it's not it looks like classic dungeons and dragons it looks like good old-fashioned western european fantasy but it also covers a lot of other cultures in there and the player's handbook is more so um but i do like that it cover that it's it's got that fantasy feel to the artwork it doesn't feel like um you know uh, uh dungeons and dragons third edition and pathfinder have some really amazing artwork for it but it's kind of a unique look that covers those editions um it's a look that i've heard online called dungeon punk which i kind of like i like that term and i like that style it's really cool but i like the fact that fifth edition kind of went away from that style to differentiate itself uh and makes it more um traditional fantasy looking i like that a lot so this chapter is uh, chapter three. It's the adventuring chapter. It covers things like uh, tr you know resting and uh, travel times, and also covers things like rewards in terms of um, uh, experience points. It does have a little bit of an experience point chart right here. You can see that right there. Hopefully you can see it under the shadows. I'm sorry about the lighting here. Um, but it does, you know, it, it only covers the first five levels. But that's to be expected. It is only a basic set after all. It's just a starter set. Um, it does have a pretty good equipment section. This is actually one of the things I like compared to previous starter sets for um, Dungeons and Dragons. It does have a really good equipment section. It's not, of course, as thorough as the one you get in the player's handbook, but it is really a fantastic um, equipment section. It's pretty good. It covers a whole lot of stuff that your players could buy and use. So if you've got some um, uh, imaginative players, um, You'll get in, you, you've got some good equipment lists for them to play around with. Um, there's a wizard right there for you, some more really awesome artwork. Um, this, the, the spell cha casting chapter is also pretty basic. It um, covers everything you need to cast spells. Uh, it has a small spell list that covers um, you know, the first five levels of play for clerics and wizards. 
Um, it doesn't cover any other spellcasting classes. It just sticks to clerics and wizards because that's all that comes in the pre-made characters. And since there's no rules on how to make your own character, that's really all you need. It's uh, it's pretty good. Um, and it covers the you know uh, levels uh, cantrips, uh, which uh, can be cast um, every round um, of combat. They don't need to be uh, memorized every day like the other spells. And then first, second, and third level spells, um, which is enough to get you up through fifth level for your cler for your classes. It's pretty good. Good significant spell list, and uh, it, by the time you hit fifth level, you know you should. And then there's the uh, the individual descriptions of the spells right here. You can see these, and uh, and then uh, the back of the book is just a, it's an appendix, which I appreciate. I like that there's an appendix here. Um, it covers the uh, the condition types that you're going to run into. Again, um, not a thorough list of condition types, I, I don't believe. Um, it does cover a lot of them. There may be a thorough list I, now that I'm looking at it, but. Um, you know, it's a, it's, it just covers. It's nice that they threw that in there um, at the end. It's a, it's a pretty important thing. And then, what else comes in the box? The next comes in the box is this. This is the adventure, the Lost Minds of Fandelver. If you've uh, been looking at the ND online at all, you've probably seen this talked about um, in blog posts and other things online. It's, it's, uh, it's the, uh, it's the, you know, the basic adventure. This is the one that a lot of people are going to start when they first play Fifth Edition Dungeons and Dragons, including my group. My group is uh, playing through this adventure right now, and you can tell because you can look at my, my book and see that it's pretty dog-eared and 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 uh, well read because I've been using it to play the adventure. Uh, I'm not going to flip through this a whole lot because I don't want to spoil much of anything for anybody who wants to pause it and look at it. But um, it does take place in the Forgotten Realms, so there's that right there. It's pretty cool. Um, it's one of my favorite settings. Now, the cool thing about this setting is that it doesn't actually do anything realm specific. So if you don't want to set it in the Forgotten Realms, you can set it in your own campaign setting. Um, that's pretty cool. There's a, there's a little basic uh, town that's in there. There's some more of that awesome artwork right here for goblins. These This is uh, probably one of my favorite pieces of goblin artwork I've ever seen. I really like these guys. They really make the goblins look vicious and scary. Like if you were a first level adventurer who had never fought a goblin before in your life and you saw these guys coming at you, You'd be a little bit scared. At least I would, anyway. They're kind of scary looking. I like that. I like that they made the goblins scary looking. Uh, and then there's, you know, there's a little town that, uh, Fan Fandolin, the town that the adventure takes place in. Um, it's a basic, uh, it's a, it's a pretty good adventure. It's not, um, super linear like a lot of third and fourth edition adventurers were. Um, especially like a lot of fourth edition adventures. That was one of the things that I had a problem with with fourth edition. Um, I personally happen to really like fourth edition. I know it was really popular to dislike fourth edition for a long time. I happen to really liked it. It was different from a lot of other games. Um, but uh, one of the things that I had with the problem with the pre-written adventures for it was that they were all pretty linear, which was also something that they ran into a third edition near the end there. A lot of those third edition adventures were also pretty linear. But this one, this one kind of goes back to uh, a classic, like, fourth, like first or second edition where the adventures were set around an adventure location with a bunch of different mini adventures that you could have in the area that uh, and it allowed the players to determine what was going to happen next like they got to you gave them adventure hooks and they get to decide whether or not they even wanted to go on that adventure and pick that one up and go in that direction and um that's kind of cool i like it a lot and uh and so that's the last minds of fandelver it's a great adventure it does bring your characters all the way up to level five so like the like i said before the starter rule book brings your characters through level five it's got enough rules to bring your characters through level five this adventure will bring your characters all the way up to level five um if you're curious the uh, experience point chart is the same between the starter set and the player's handbook so by the time you get up to the player's handbook um your characters will legally be level five you don't have to worry about that it's not uh, like a, a a smaller experience point chart or anything like that but it um uh, you know by the time you finish this adventure you've done everything that the box set has to be for you to do and you're ready to move on to the player's handbook assuming you want to keep playing but I mean, assuming you've gone through the whole adventure and made your character all the way to level five, I don't know why you wouldn't want to. So um, that is that is what it's designed for. It is designed to bring you up to uh, the player's handbook. Let's see what else is in the box set. These are the, these are the um, pre-made adventure, the characters that come with the game. Um, uh, they, uh, they made a race and class combo, but they didn't pick uh, gender or name or anything like that. So you can pick the names. The character sheets, by the way, let's take a look at the character sheet. The character sheet, by the way, I like. It's really kind of neat looking. Um, it's got these cool... Um, so like where your stat block is, they uh, they did it differently this time. They put um, uh, a big block with a, a little circle on the bottom. And what they did here, um, which is what I'm doing with my personal characters, you, they put the actual stat number in the little circle and then the big, the big bonus that you use most of the time in the big block 
but the truth is, is that you could write it whichever way you're more comfortable with. And I like that they did it that way. I like that they made it so you could do whatever you wanted to with it. Um, well, there's your skill list right here. So you can see um, there's your saving throws in the top and your skill list right here. So you can see what you're proficient with. Um, there's some um, more, more proficiencies down there in the bottom. Um, special abilities that you've got. And then it gets into here. It gets into the personality traits, um, ideals, bonds, and flaws. Now, it doesn't really explain, like how those things work per se but since mechanically there's not a whole lot to them it's that's okay um and then again it doesn't let you pick those things when you're because you're not really creating these characters they're pre-generated so it just gives you kind of but it gives you kind of like a nice little personality for your character so you can go through and pick the one that you want um so this one here is the human fighter folk hero um, there's, um, there's also here is the, uh, and then on the back of the character sheet, I want to talk about this first. In the back of the character sheet, some descriptions, uh, your race is described, your class is described, what your background in is, is described. So this one uses the, uh, the background bits, the, the, the personality traits and all that to give the character an actual story that they wrote into a background on the back of the character, which I think is kind of neat. Um, it's a little different for starter set character pre-generated characters. Usually they're just a group of stats and it's up to you to create the story. Um, but uh, this is kind of cool that it does come with its own uh, pre-written stories for you to use. Um, and it ties a lot of them directly into the Lost Minds of Phandalin, which is kind of cool. And then it has this point right here. This is gaining levels. So as your character gains levels, it just tells you what to do with your character. Again, um, very different when you have the actual player's handbook. You can you, you get choices that you can make, um, whereas this one just kind of says this is what happens. You get these things when you hit when you hit uh, when you finally hit fourth level. You get these things. This is what happens, um, and then uh, and so you're you're like preset. Your characters are pre-programmed to do certain things when they reach certain levels. Um, and, and so it's a little bit limited that way, and, and uh, I don't necessarily like that idea, but um, it does make for an easier starter set. And uh, for some people, it'll work. It'll give them a basics on how the game works, and it'll lead them up enough into the game so that when they do get to the player's handbook, they know enough about what they're doing that they can make the choices um, that are required of them when they reach levels. So here's the wizard. Uh, there's a, a halfling rogue. The wizard, by the way, was an elf. There's the there's a, a, a hill dwarf cleric. There's another human fighter. This one is a noble. So you get a little bit uh, example of how they can be different while being the same class and race. Uh, and then that's all your pre-generated characters. It's enough to get a good starter um, uh, party going. Uh, I think there was five. Is that what there was five there? One. Let's see. One, two, three. Five, yeah, five, five characters. That's enough to get a. That's enough to get a good party started. Uh, two fighters and then a um, a cleric, a wizard, and a and a rogue. That's a good start party. And then it gives you a blank character sheet that you can use to photocopy off. Well, this one is only one sided, but it's everything. It's everything. It's the whole character sheet. It's uh, the same character sheet that comes in the player's handbook. Um, although that one is a little bit more detailed because it comes with a second page. But um, every, really, everything you need is on this front page. Um, and then the back page of this is just an advertisement. Um, uh, it's an advertisement for D&D Encounters. Um, I've never personally done that myself, but it's pretty cool. Um, you participate in um, store events uh, and play in, in pre-generated, in, in specific adventures created for the encounters. Um, and uh, allows you to play adventures with people basically all across the country, all across the world, really, for that matter, who are all playing the same adventures as you are. And uh, I think it gets tracked somewhere and you can keep your characters and play at any encounters um event that you want to so like if you're out traveling but you have your character your encounters character with you you can do that um it's pretty cool uh i may do a, a whole video on encounters at one point I, and i'm not really that familiar with it so i'd have to you know bone up on it a little bit before i did that but that's basically how it works so just an advertisement and that's really it that's really all it comes with you can see the box is empty that's all it comes with but i want point out to you how thick this box is look at how thick that box is you can see it's a, it's a big box right why would they give you this gigantic box with all this little just this little piddly amount of stuff in it right like just a couple of books some some pieces of paper and an advertisement right well that's because it's designed for you to store your stuff in that's exactly what i'm doing with it i'm the dm in my campaign so i'm storing you know, like all the adventures that i plan on using notes npcs my dm screen um all that stuff goes in here um but uh, if you're the player, you can uh, you can just store um, like your character sheet and your player's handbook, and then it'll all go in the box. And then it's a nice little convenient place for you to keep everything. And I think that was that was great. I think that was brilliant of Wizards um, to design the box that way. I think it was really cool. So there you go.
there's the uh, there's the box set. Okay, and there you have it, the Dungeons & Dragons starter set. Um, I think it's totally worth it. Uh, you can find it, of course, at your friendly local game store. It retails about uh, $20. I think it's nineteen ninety nine, dollars um, And it's totally worth the price, I think. I highly recommend you go to your friendly local game store. If you're here in San Diego, Villainous Layer Games is the place to go. Uh, Villainous Layer Comics and Games, they do sell comic books there, too. Um, I mostly go there, of course, for games, but I recommend them. Uh, but well, wherever you live, go to your friendly local game store, pick it up there. If uh, if you don't have one near you, or if you're maybe just a little bit strapped for cash and twenty dollars is a little too much for a game, you can of course get it online at places like Amazon.com and Barnes and Noble, where they'll have it uh, a little bit cheaper, uh, somewhere around fifteen dollars is usually what they sell it for. Um, I think maybe you might even be able to get it cheaper than that, but. Um, yeah, I, I highly recommend picking it up. It's totally worth it. If you've never played before, it's 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 a great place to start. And if you're uh, a first-time Dungeon, Dungeon Master, but you've played as a player before, also a great place to start. Um, and even if you're an experienced player and you have tons of experience playing, even 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons, still uh, totally worth the purchase, if for no other reason than the adventure inside of it is a great first-level adventure for your campaign. Uh, which is what I'm doing. I'm using it in my campaign. And uh, like I said before, I'll put a link to the campaign, um, uh, the Obsidian Portal page for the campaign uh, down below, and you can check that out. But uh, in the meantime, highly recommend it. Go pick it up. It's totally worth the money. And uh, that's it for today. We'll see you in my next video where we're going to talk about the Dungeons & Dragons Player's Handbook. Until then, uh, keep playing. Bye!